Oh, well, we see the influence of people coming in. So thank you for joining us today. We will start in a few minutes. A few seconds. Okay, thank you all for joining us today. My name is Luis Mares. I am the, the director of the National uh, Community Mobilization Program for the Latino Commission on AIDS in New York. Um, and we are the commission, and we are the commission, and have you and try to share the information about hepatitis C in the United States uh, in, in memory in observing National Hepatitis Hispanic Awareness Day. Hello. I said hello is uh, the person present today. She's gonna present about uh, the information we have you. Hello. Hi, should I go and introduce myself? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Heather Bradley. Um, I'm an associate professor of epidemiology at the Emory Rollins School of Public Health. Um, hepatitis uh, C is is one of the infections that I that I work probably the most on. Um, and I'm also the project director at HEPU, so I'm looking forward to telling you about some of the resources that um, that we have available at HEPU, particularly uh, when it comes to uh, surveillance uh, data for, for viral hepatitis. So thanks for having me. Next slide. Oh, yeah. Um, the agenda for today's um, webinar is, as you see in the image, uh, first, we're going to talk about the impact of hepatitis C on the Hispanic Latinx community, and that part is going to be presented by me. But following that, um, Heather will present and have you features on site overview, and also the viral hepatitis surveillance in the United States and why it's important. And at the end, we'll have a discussion. Uh, we're all time, time for questions and answers as well. Also. Yeah, and I'm only smiling for the recognition and ice. Uh, to start, I'd like to share a few details about the commission. Um, the commission was founded in 1990 to lead health advocacy efforts for Latinos. Um, basically, initially with remote HIV education testing, um, but we have grown up since then. We developed model prevention programs for high-risk communities, and we also build capacity in community organizations. Uh, the Latino Commission NAIS seeks to meet the health challenges and address the disparities and the impact of HIV and AIDS on the Latino community, as well as hepatitis, STIs, uh, and also lately COVID-19 and um, monkeypox. It is a nonprofit organization committed to creating and promoting a safe space for Latinos, immigrants, LGBT community, and other minorities. Next. Yeah, the, um, the timing of this webinar is very important because today we are observing, we are celebrating or, or, or creating awareness on hepatitis in Latinos, and this is uh, Hispanic Awareness Day. Hepatitis, and uh, we celebrate also the entire month of May. It is uh, Hepatitis um, Awareness Month, and also in a few days we're going to have a Hepatitis Testing Day. It's very important that all these things happen at the same time because we are trying to create awareness not only in Latinos but in the entire community about uh, Hepatitis C, the, the impact of Hepatitis C, and what we need to do to end this epidemic as well. Next. Now, now a quick. Um, look at the national impact of hepatitis C. The good, the hundreds of thousands have been already cured and treated and cured for hepatitis C with direct active antiviral uh, medications. The bad is even more than, even more now, the, more than 40% of the people who is infected with hepatitis C, they don't know they carry this virus and they're undiagnosed. And the challenge is that a growing number of younger Americans are being infected with hepatitis C due to injection drug use. The opioid uh, epidemic is causing an alarming increase in numbers of uh, new cases of hepatitis C. So according to CDC, more than 66,700 Americans were newly infected with hepatitis C in 2020. Uh, I compared to 34,000 in 2015, you can see it's more almost a double number of people infected with hepatitis C. So the next. Here we can see narrowing on the Hispanic Latino community chronic liver disease, similarly a leading cause of death in, in the community, in Latino communities. According to the Department of Health and Human Services, chronic liver disease uh, is higher among Hispanics than among whites, 
and it was poor living costs of debt for middle-aged Hispanic men in 2019. Um, also, uh, as noted in the U.S. Department of Health Human Services, National Viral Hepatitis Action Plan 2017-2020 limited epidemiological data for hepatitis C remains a key barrier in effectively addressing the epidemic locally and nationally. Also, we have seen uh, increasing numbers across the, the spectrum of ethnicities on hepatitis C. Um, and focusing on Latinos, we have seen an increase like uh, four times since 2010 to 2020. Um, and also we know that Latinos do not have treatment as much as whites. And this is because of a condition that we call uh, health disparities, um, social determinants of health that affect minorities um, in the United States, including, of course, Latinos and Hispanics. Um, many factors contribute to that language, um, access to um, medical insurance, uh, immigration status, et cetera. So uh, that's something that we had to work on um, to increase those disparities to be make able that all communities, all communities, including Hispanics, have access to services and also to treatment for hepatitis C. The public health surveillance system for hepatitis C is not as robust as it is in other infection diseases. This is HIV. We know that for HIV, we, the, the, the organ and the issues have created an in, in, incredible good um, surveillance program. For hepatitis C, it's not as that. We're working on that. If you and, and Emory and uh, CDC are working on that as well, uh, so we can have a better reports every year, so we have no more about how this epidemic impacts in the nation. So with that, I think we follow with Heather's information. Thanks so much, Luis. Um, and thanks again for, for having me. Um, Happy You has been uh, uh, excited to be, to be part of a number of these awareness days with you all. And, um, and we're always happy to be here to talk about uh, to talk about uh, hepatitis C burden of disease and the resources that are available on our site to help um, practitioners and researchers and um, and advocates and and folks in your group uh, to to talk about uh, the burden of disease uh, for hepatitis C. So I'm going to start um, the talk today by just giving you a sort of a tour of HEPU and. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with HEPU, just to let you know, you know what kinds of data we have on the site, what kinds of resources we have available. Um, and then I'll move into talking about uh, a special project that we've just launched recently, um, which is, uh, you know, it's sort of, a, a, it's a, it aims to, to describe surveillance practices related to viral hepatitis uh, around the US and, and, and really helps us to see where improvements are needed in the realm of viral hepatitis surveillance. So just to start out with, um, you know, a little bit of uh, what is HEPU. So HEPU is an online platform that uh, visualizes data and disseminates insights to really a variety of audiences um, on explaining uh, the viral hepatitis epidemic across the US. Um, uh, this is a Powered by AIDS View project. So some of you may be familiar um, with our sister site, or I would say our big sister site, AIDS View, which has been around a lot longer. Um, and and the, the whole infrastructure, the view infrastructure is led by my colleague, uh, Dr. Patrick Sullivan. And really what we aim to do is to take uh, data and make it accessible to folks, right? So we, um, you know, we believe that uh, that looking at tables isn't as um, impact, impactful as looking at maps. And so um, we try to, to sort of process data and visualize data in a way that, um, that helps uh, people to see what's going on around them and, and where more resources are needed. Um, and we, that's the case for AIDSU and HEPU. Uh, and, but I'm gonna talk really about the resources on HEPU today. <clears throat> so when it comes down to it, you know, we um, at HEPU are using data and, um, and creating new data estimates, as well as displaying uh, data that already exists in order to visualize where programmatic in interventions are needed the most. So where do we see the highest burden of hepatitis uh, C, which is, you know, what mo most of our work is in, in the area of hepatitis C? Um, and, you know, and where do we really need to be allocating resources toward you know, better measurement, more treatment, um, more screening uh, and, and diagnosis around the country. 
So we do this in a way uh, that allows, you know, the policymakers and the advocates um, and the folks who, who use data to make change to really, uh, to really understand um, through visualizations, you know, uh, where we need to be moving in, the, in, in fighting this epidemic. So I know this is a busy slide. I'll just kind of walk you through sort of, you know, some of the resources that we have on HEPView. Um, you know, I would say like maps is our love language at HEPView. So everything is displayed um, in, in uh, either, you know, uh, a, a map format or an infographic format, really just sort of making uh, numbers uh, accessible and easy to use. So, um, so at the state level, we have, uh, uh, maps, which you can see here, actually showing um, state level hepatitis C prevalence estimates. These are modeled estimates um, done by our team. And I can talk a little bit about why it is that we, we model prevalence estimates for hepatitis C um, here in a few minutes. We have those data stratified by sex, age, and race. Um, we also have hepatitis C related mortality data. Um, and then we have the hepatitis C related mortality data also at the county level. So at both the state and the county level, we have rates of hepatitis C related mortality. Um, this is a very important indicator for the Hispanic and Latinx community. Um, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. We also um, really strive to help you to show the connection between, um, between the opioid uh, epidemic or, or crisis um, and, and uh, the hep viral hepatitis, right? So um, we have uh, some side-by-side -side maps showing, you know, how uh, hepatitis uh, is really syndemic with new cases of viral hepatitis. Hepatitis is syndemic with the opioid crisis. Um, and so we have a uh, map showing some of the opioid indicators like the opioid prescription rate, narcotic overdose mortality rate, and then the pain reliever misuse percent, um, which you can look sort of visualize against where we see a lot of um, hepatitis C in order to see the connection between, uh, between really those two public health uh, issues. And then we also have data on, on treatment restrictions for hepatitis C so that we can see you know, where treatment is, is restricted for various reasons versus um, where it's really needed because of a high burden of, of hepatitis C. <clears throat> We also have um, local data profiles. So this is a really cool feature of the site where, you know, I just went through all of the different indicators and different kinds of data that we have. You can go to the local data section of the site and, and basically download a ready-made profile that will give you all of the relevant data that we have um, in, in that area. So if you're, you know, wanting to go to talk to your policymaker about hepatitis C, uh, you can go, Go to the local data. Go to the state that you're, or the states that you're talking about, and um, and HEPI will give you a very nice uh, printout fact sheet um, that you can um, take as a sort of state profile to folks that you're talking about. So we try to make that really easy. Um, in the state profiles, we also have some social determinants of health, uh, uh, like you know, uh, education levels, income inequality levels, poverty levels. Um, and then, uh, and then health insurance coverage. So these are sort of social determinants of health that that we, um, you know, uh, that we sort of can visualize against um, hepatitis C prevalence. We know that um, that viral uh, hepatitis are are uh, diseases driven by social inequalities and and um, subpar social determinants of health. And so we think it's really important to be able to see these maps um, and how they compare to uh, how the areas that are heavily affected by hepatitis C are also heavily affected by, um, by these subpar, you know, social determinants of health and, and inequalities. So I just wanted to take a, you know, a, a moment and really show you how side-by-side um, -side comparisons, you know, of, of hepatitis C indicators um, against other uh, sort of kinds of maps can be impactful. We, uh, so this is what I'm showing you here is the, is uh, hepatitis C mortality levels at the county level on the left side here in varying stages of purple. So the more, um, the darker purple areas are where, um, are the areas where we see higher, the highest uh, levels of hepatitis C mortality. 
And this map over here, this is actually not a map that's available on um, HEPU, but I wanted to show you this because today we're talking about, you know, um, about hepatitis awareness um, in the Hispanic and Latinx communities. And so uh, here we're, we're looking at the percentage of the population by county um, that is uh, Hispanic or, or Latino. And I, this was as of the 2020 census. And so you can really see, you know, it's very powerful to see how this sort of these, these high, these areas with high hepatitis C mortality track alongside um, the areas with, with higher percentages of the population that's, um, that's Hispanic or, or Latinx. And so um, this is, although this map uh, on the right is not available on our site, you can do side-by-side -side comparisons like this to see how, for example, hepatitis C uh, mortality tracks against, um, you know, uh, high levels of poverty or high levels of, of being uninsured. And so this is the way, you know, that we, um, the, the way that we try to, to visualize data um, at HEPU to show how, uh, you know, at an area level, uh, hepatitis C burden is, is associated with certain population characteristics. And unfortunately, um, you know, as, as we all know, uh, hepatitis C mortality does just really heavily affect Hispanic and Latinx communities. And this is something that we're able to see here in this side-by-side um, -side map. So back to some of the resources that help you, um, we have uh, a series of deeper look pages. And, and what these are is they're, these are basically topic areas where we take everything related to that topic area on the site and put it in one place. So we have um, deeper look pages currently on the opioid hepatitis syndemic, um, the importance of, of, of immuniz immunization for hepatitis and then um, viral hepatitis elimination. And so, you know, these, these deeper look pages may include <clears throat> infographics that we've developed at HEPU uh, that are related to that topic, guest blogs that we've published, local statistics, uh, maps, of course, um, and downloadable data. So for any of these topics, you're able to quickly go to the site, go to one place, and see everything that we have um, available on that particular topic. So this is an easy way to to sort of pull a variety of resources at one time um, on, on any given area. We do uh, often publish expert Q&A blogs. This is, um, we, we do these uh, probably four or five times a year now. And so, um, you know, we're, we've, uh, we talk about, you know, about payer systems for hepatitis C testing and treatment. Um, we talk about treatment restrictions. We talk about the relationship between viral hepatitis um, and liver cancer. And so um, we really try to hone in to, to topics that are timely and important to, to the community um, at a given time and, and call, on, call on experts um, in our networks to, to answer um, questions you know, on that topic. And, and we publish these as blog posts. Um, so, so do keep an eye out for these. We have something new coming out um, all the time in, in terms of these expert blog posts. And I think they're, they're really can be informative and helpful about what the current issues are. We have uh, also a section on the site uh, where we publish infographics. So um, with each new data release, you know, let's take, for example, the hepatitis C mortality data that we were just looking at. Um, <clears throat> we produce the core findings from that data release um, as, as an infographic, which can be easily incorporated into um, PowerPoint slide presentations, fact sheets, uh, you know, to be, they can be listed and used for whatever purpose um, you want. And we, these are freely downloadable um, and we often see them in other people's presentations and, and we love to see that. So um, these are sort of ready-made infographics containing data from HEPU that you can feel free to um, download and use in your own talks. Um, and we, we always translate, especially around this time of year for the awareness days, we always translate some of these um, into Spanish. So we also have Spanish language uh, infographics on the site. So one of the topics um, that we have uh, quite a few resources on on the site is sort of this intersection intersection of the opioid crisis with hepatitis C. So, um, you know, I think uh, many of us probably on the call know that the that 
the opioid crisis is endemic with both hepatitis C and HIV, um, and is becoming more and more so, unfortunately, as uh, as people have transitioned from um, from oral use of prescription drugs to uh, to substances that are more likely to be injected. Um, we do see these bloodborne viruses like HIV and hepatitis C um, are can be overlooked consequences of the opioid crisis. And so um, we try to draw a lot of attention to this endemic um, on our site to say, you know, that new hepatitis C infections are happening um, among young people. This is not, you know, no longer, unfortunately, a baby boomer, um, you know, just a baby boomer problem. Um, we're actually seeing new infections and new deaths among younger people uh, due to increasing injection drug use. And so um, <clears throat> we have a a, quite a bit of data and, and, and infographics and resources um, available for sort of helping to visualize this, this syndemic and, and, and trying to raise awareness about this syndemic to policymakers and others. Some of the maps that we have for opioid indicators that you can view alongside the hepatitis um, burden maps are the narcotic overdose mortality rate, um, the opioid prescription rate, so the, so the number of opioids prescribed per person, um, and then the percentage of people who self-report um, a pain reliever uh, uh, misuse uh, disorder. And so um, these, you know, we update uh, to whatever the latest data are, and you can view these uh, just alongside um, hepatitis burden of disease to see, you know, really how these two public health problems um, are, are unfortunately very syndemic uh, um, and, and both are seem to be getting worse, not better, unfortunately. So uh, in terms of comparing data, you know, I've talked a little bit about how you're, you're able to view the hepatitis C um, burden of disease maps against uh, some of these opioid indicators. But we also know that, you know, as I said before, these are, these are viral hepatitis, are, are, these are infections that are born of social inequality and social determinants of health, right? And so we, um, you can also, look at uh, the burden of disease uh, for hepatitis C stratified by age, sex, um, and race. And then you can view those uh, data against or, or alongside uh, social determinants um, of health in addition to some of the opioid maps I talked about. And so, um, and you can do the same thing, uh, by the way, looking at uh, where there are treatment restrictions for hepatitis C versus where the highest burden of disease is. Um, you're able to print custom map views directly from the website, um, and, and we've come up with, with a way to allow you to Im embed um, the maps directly into uh, your own website. Um, you can also cut and paste these and put them in presentations. So a lot of these data comparisons are very easy to sort of lift off the site and transport to, um, to whatever medium um, you know, you'd like to present them in. So I just want to spend a moment showing you um, how to navigate the, the HEPU site. Um, when you go to view the map, you're going to get a page that looks like this. There's a lot going on, right? Um, but uh, what you want to look at first is uh, you can, so you're going to select a data set up here, right? So we talked about how we have hepatitis C prevalence. When you, when you do this drop down, you're also going to see, you know, hepatitis C mortality. Um, and then you can uh, look at, um, you can look over here and see whether those data are available at the county or the state level. For example, mortality is available at the county and state level. So you can toggle between these to show you county level versus state level data. Any stratifications that are available for that data set that you're looking at are gonna be listed here. So you can look at data just for specific age groups um, by sex, by race, um, and then uh, the data comparison uh, is going to is going to say, you know, what would you like to see alongside this map? So then you can look at, you know, um, these burden of disease or, or mortality maps against um, maybe an opioid uh, indicator or uh, or one of the social determinants of health that we've been talking about. And you can also overlay uh, the map with um, with the current uh, congressional districts. So. Um, that's, you know, and then here you can download the map for use in a presentation. Um, you can download the actual data set feeding these maps if you'd like to use, you know, any of these estimates or data in your own 
analysis, you can do that uh, there. So, so think, you know, sort of top down here, you select at the top and then you select what you want to see in the filters. Of course, the clear buttons right over here <clears throat> and you can, uh, and it's going to generate maps based on what you input um, on those different levels. So I want to talk for just a few minutes um, as I wrap up here about viral hepatitis surveillance in the U.S. You know, I mentioned earlier that the data that we, um, much of the data that we present on HEPU uh, are, these are modeled estimates that, um, that I, we, a, a team that I work with has, has worked on through funding from, from CDC, right? And so, um, you know, it's surveillance. We, we typically think about surveillance estimates uh, coming from something more like counting, right? Like you get case reports and you publish the number of case reports and that's the, these are the burden disease estimates. Well, you know, many of you on this call will know that that's not quite how it works for hepatitis. Um, the hepatitis uh, surveillance programs are, are much uh, less well-funded compared to, you know, a disease like HIV. And so um, to understand what's happening with hepatitis burden of disease, we often have to use these, these modeled estimates. Of course, we would like to be in a place where um, we weren't using modeled estimates where, you know, each state had enough funding and resources to, to do um, robust surveillance uh, for hepatitis, uh, for, for all viral hepatitis um, infections. And so we, uh, we launched last year a surveillance status report. Um, and this is the, this is the product of a, of a, um, of a survey that we sent out to jurisdictions that are funded around the country to do viral hepatitis surveillance by CDC. And we basically asked them about, you know, their, their capacity to do viral hepatitis surveillance, um, their viral hepatitis practices to really understand sort of what, um, what does the patchwork of, of viral hepatitis surveillance look like across the US? It is being done pretty differently from state to state based on funding um, that's available <clears throat> from, state, from state to state. Um, and so we really wanted to understand, you know, across the country, what does this look like? CDC has just uh, started um, releasing more money than previously for viral hepatitis surveillance. So last year was really a baseline year to see what was happening prior to that influx of funding. And we are actually just about to launch the second survey now to see what kinds of changes were possible given the additional funding from CDC. Um, of course, you know, we'll be doing this every year to look at, you know, funding that comes in and, and improvements in surveillance that come out. But this is all with a mind toward, you know, the goal is that there would be you know, robust enough surveillance that we wouldn't be using modeled estimates, you know, on, on HEPU, we would be using, you know, data that come from state and local jurisdictions. But I think nationally, we've got a, a ways to go before we get there. So I'll um, present some of these findings to you. Um, but I encourage you to go to the site if you're interested in this topic and, and look at the first report. And I anticipate there will be a second report out within a few months. So um, we found that only 68% of jurisdictions had at least one staff person working on viral hepatitis surveillance. And by the way, we had a 95% response rate. This is very representative of, of jurisdictions in the US. Um, some of them are states and some of them are cities, depending on the, the funding, um, where the funding comes from CDC. So uh, in, in terms of reportable hepatitis B and C, this is you know, most jurisdictions um, have acute and chronic um, hepatitis B and C uh, infections as reportable infections. Um, <clears throat> however, only 55% of jurisdictions disseminated viral, hepati viral hepatitis data in any report. So 45% of jurisdictions didn't disseminate viral hepatitis data at all. Um, and only 43% of jurisdictions had viral hepatitis elimination goals established. So we also ask about the jurisdiction's abilities uh, to perform investigations. So, you know, we've heard a lot about contact tracing and case investigations during COVID. Um, and, uh, and we know that these do happen routinely for HIV. Um, so we wanted to know what jurisdictions were sort of able to do with their current level of resources in terms of investigations um, for HEP, B, and C. 
Um, so in terms of hepatitis B, 80% uh, of jurisdictions said that they were ever able to review medical records or contact a provider when they got a, a case that looked like it might be acute. Um, and this is a very much, uh, I would say this is a, this is overstated in terms of, it's not that eight, they do it 80% of the time, it's that 80% of the jurisdictions were ever able to do that. Only 36% were ever able to contact other people who may have been exposed and only 30% were ever able to um, review the data and contact other people who may have been exposed. This looks a little bit worse actually for hepatitis C, um, which is fairly problematic because we know that new infections are mostly coming from people who inject drugs, which makes the contact tracing and, and notification um, pretty important uh, towards stopping hepatitis C infections in networks. So 71% uh, were ever able to review a medical record. 23% were ever able to contact people who may have been exposed and 20% um, did both things. So a lot of room for, for improvement there. And I wanna stress that um, these are issues, these are funding and resource availability issues. These are, um, we know that these are not states and cities who are not doing these things because they don't think it's important. You know, these are states and cities whose surveillance um, systems are underfunded and so, um, the reason for making this public is to say, look, you know, these things, these are important activities, but the, but the funding and the resources need to need to come to, you know, meet the meet the mark in order to be able to do these things. We, we also ask people about um, about their capacity to use uh, to use negative labs that come in. We know for HIV, um, a lot of times we're able to see that an HIV infection is a new infection when there are a series of, of negative uh, results coming, you know, uh, behind it. We know when that person, you know, a lot of times we're able to know when somebody seroconverts if they're kind of a routine tester. Um, for hepatitis B and C, that's also important, um, particularly for hep C, because it is treatable. And so in order to, you know, in order to understand, it, um, you know, whether people have either cleared uh, hepatitis B or C infection or have been successfully treated, we really uh, need to be able to use these negative labs to sort of understand, you know, where somebody is in their course of disease. Uh, so what this is showing you is that um, in 36% of jurisdictions, negative lab results were reportable. So, so they mostly weren't reportable. Um, but even where they uh, were reportable, um, or sorry, even where they weren't reportable, um, we we see that 56% um, of jurisdictions have are still receiving some of them, but only 39% of jurisdictions are able to use them, um, which means, again, this is a capacity problem. It's not that, you know, it's that the, the states couldn't be using the negative labs if they had enough um, human resources capacity. It's just, uh, it just, this is a big data processing job and, and we need the human resources to do both. Um, we have, uh, for hepatitis C, there are more jurisdictions where negative lab results are reportable, um, but then we see, again, a, a fall off in terms of um, even where they're not reportable, we still see that they're getting some of them, but then a fall off between, you know, whether they're getting negative labs and whether they're actually able to process them and, and use them. So one thing that, um, that we are adding, uh, you know, to our survey this year is a, is a pointed question about the ability to, to act on um, hepatitis B and C disparities. Um, so, you know, I think we have very little data actually on the burden of hepatitis C, for example, in Hispanic and Latinx communities because surveillance for viral hepatitis is so, um, you know, under, under resourced nationally that you know, the ability to see disparities in the data is really even, um, we, we have even sort of less of an ability to look at disparities than we do to sort of look at even overall burden of disease and which is already, uh, which is already sort of uh, suboptimal, right? And so um, we, we're asking jurisdictions this, this question this year, which is, 
are you able to use surveillance data to assess disparities in hepatitis B infections? And we're asking about, you know, disparities by race, race ethnicity, urbanicity, risk group, birthplace, and sexual orientation or gender ID or identity. So we're, we are going to be asking jurisdictions to tell us, you know, are you using these data to make decisions about funding allocation, to provide targeted uh, provider training, to increase community education and awareness of of higher um, risk and burden of disease in certain populations um, to tailor prevention testing or treatment strategies in a way that is um, equitable? Um, or do you not have adequate data to assess this disparity because, you know, because your data are, are not, you don't have the capacity, right, to, to, to process the data in a way that would allow you to see these disparities and act on them. So um, hopefully when I come talk to you guys next year, I'll have um, something to report in terms of how jurisdictions are or are not able to use their viral hepatitis surveillance data to act on, on the health disparities that we know um, exist. And so we're gonna keep monitoring these uh, surveillance practices and capacity over time um, and continue to highlight the places where we need improvements in surveillance data and where we need more robustness in terms of um, in terms of uh, surveillance programs. Um, and I, you know, we were working with a large steering committee, which includes, you know, a lot of the, the, um, the hepatitis advocacy and policy organizations. And so, uh, and I, this is, I think I said in the beginning, but this, this whole project, this whole surveillance status summary is being done um, in collaboration with NASDAQ. So we've got, you know, we've really been able to sort of catalyze the, um, some of our partners on this issue. And I think, this, this will be an important um, role for HEPU going forward, which is to say, you know, like, why don't we have better data on, um, on hepatitis burden of disease in, in most affected communities? Um, and how, how do we get there, right? What, what kinds of resources and what kinds of practices do we need to be doing to, to get closer? So looking forward, there's, there's a lot going on um, actually this year in, on HEPU. Uh, we are working on updated hepatitis C prevalence estimates. Those will be, um, the, the new estimates will be 2017 to 2020 estimates. Um, so you, everyone's trying to catch up with surveillance um, post COVID, but this should, we should have estimates updated to 2020 um, later this year. Our, my group is, our, 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 our research group is working on that currently with CDC. Um, we also have some estimates of injection involved overdose mortality by state. And we're gonna be publishing those um, later uh, in the year. I think those will, you know, those are gonna track a little bit uh, more closely to new hepatitis C infections um, uh, because this is, you know, really an indicator of, of where injection um, practices have, have increased um, in particularly in certain parts of the country. Um, and then we'll be updating our opioid indicators that you can use to for side-by-side -side comparison of the hepatitis um, burden of disease uh, estimates. So uh, I can answer any questions that you all may have. Um, I know Luis is here who, who can also uh, help to answer questions. Um, if anybody has discussion or, or questions um, they wanna put forward. Uh, I didn't see anybody running questions. Um, but uh, do you know of any changes that have been done uh, based on the information that we have now on hepatitis C in terms of laws or changes on um, any type of um, addressing these, these issues? Have used this data that it's more understandable and clearly understandable? Uh, yeah, it's hard. I mean, so I don't, you know, it's a combination of there's so many people working not so many, there aren't enough people working in this space, but, um, you know, I don't know if we could take credit as you entirely for anything that's happened, but I do think, um, you know, I do think that treatment restrictions, for example, are, are easing over time across states. Um, and part of that is, is really educating policymakers on uh, how much of a hepatitis C problem they have in their state. A lot of policymakers are maybe thinking about HIV or other infectious diseases, but just hepatitis, um, you know, viral hepatitis is so overlooked um, at, the, at the national level as a, as a problem. And up until COVID, um, 
hepatitis C was killing more people every year than every other reportable infectious disease combined. And yet, um, you know, we just have to keep um, blowing the horn and showing the numbers and showing the maps to get people to pay attention um, to, to what's happening with, with hepatitis C. So I think, you know, and I, I also think, right, there's a big, right now, there's a big move from Francis Collins, a former director of the, of the NIH, uh, toward a national hepatitis um, C elimination strategy. There's, with a big fo focus on testing and treatment, um, and so there's some exciting things going on in the world of hepatitis right now. Um, I think, you know, we've got to keep talking about uh, the importance of surveillance for measuring progress toward elimination. Um, and so that's where we see, you know, the work that we're doing right now with the surveillance status report uh, sort of is filling that gap to say, you know, testing and treatment is so important. Um, but in order to know how close or far away we are from elimination, we've got to do a better job of measuring um, burden of disease and, and doing surveillance um, at the state and, and local levels. I, I want to have your website up. Maybe I didn't see it. Is there any graphics showing um, the in distribution of treatment by ethnicities or? Who is uh, the distribution of, of treatment. Yes. We don't know. We don't have those data. This is something that we've been working on for a long time. Um, you know, getting access to the right data sets. Uh, that is, it is definitely on our, our on our agenda, um, and and in particular, looking at at racial and ethnic disparities in treatment. So this is something that we're. Um, it's a it's an ongoing negotiation, is what I'll say. This is very important to know who is receiving or who's not receiving treatment. Mm -hmm. Promoting them, get awareness as well. Um, definitely. Here's what that said you oh. are using to assume injection drug use mortality. Yeah. Um, so we, um, Eric Hall, my colleague, and I have, have been working with CDC over the past couple of years to uh, on a new estimate of the number of people who inject drugs, which was released um, in CID last year. And one of the components that we needed in our model was, was for injection involved um, overdose. Without going into details, we needed that estimate just sort of as a parameter to the, to the model we were using to estimate um, the number of people who inject drugs. And so what, um, we basically used data, uh, national data on from people who are entering treatment programs to look at uh, mode of administration for per drug types. So we have data nationally, at least for publicly funded and a lot of privately funded clinics on when people come in, you know, when they're they're asked to report which substances they have been using and they're and they're main mode of administration for each. So we were, we came up with a basically a, a way to predict the probability that somebody who used who who uses a certain substance is injecting it based on those data. And then we applied those probabilities to um, to NVSS data on um, what was found, what kinds of substances were found on talk screen for overdose. So there are um, some limitations there for sure. Uh, but um, but that's, you know, that's what we were able to come up with. I do think that the data uh, from CDC and from ONAP are in, are really improving um, in terms of um, sort of having a better understanding of what the mode of administration is, um, you know, that, that, that actually leads to the overdose. So we don't know if our system doesn't say whether somebody actually injected prior to their death. It says, were they likely an injector based on the kinds of substances that were found um, on TOX screen? So um, I think the surveillance systems are improving. There's been a, a fair amount of resource put into those death scene investigations and, and, and trying to document um, what was the probable uh, mode of administration for the substance that, that led to, to mortality. Um, so I, I, I assume, you know, that those data will become better and better over time and we'll be able to more directly estimate, but, but for now we're using treatment data alongside, um, 
alongside the tox screen data on, for the for deaths. Thank you. Any other question for Heather? Well, there's more question, Heather. Thank you very much again for being with us another year. Yeah, it's always good to be here. Yeah. And so I hope to have you next year again. More information, and we see the advances that have you are doing with hepatitis B and other areas that are not covered yet. So I'm sure we're going to bring more information. I think we'll have a lot of new things to show you next year. So perfect. Um, preview <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> okay awesome. thank you everybody thank you very much for being with us today on hispanic hepatitis awareness day bye-bye thank you bye-bye